Every World War II documentary shows the same footage. Sleek P-51 Mustangs escorting bombers to Berlin, claiming they won the air war. Here's what they're not telling you. The Mustang flew 213,000 sorties. Another fighter flew 423,000. The Mustang dropped 6,000 tons of bombs. Another aircraft dropped 132,000 tons. The mathematics of victory tell a completely different story than Hollywood's version of events. The P-51 Mustang gets all the glory, but the numbers reveal a shocking truth. While documentaries showcase Mustangs escorting bombers to Berlin, the P-47 Thunderbolt flew 423,000 combat sorties compared to the Mustang's 213,000. That's nearly double the missions, yet nobody talks about it. Here's the timeline that destroys the escort myth. Mustangs began escorting bombers to Berlin in March 1944. Sounds impressive, right? Wrong. By January 1944, before Mustangs arrived in force, Germany had already lost 307 fighters and 284 experienced pilots in a single month. The Luftwaffe was hemorrhaging aircraft and pilots while the Mustang was still being shipped to Europe. The brutal mathematics expose the deception. In January 1944, German fighter losses were catastrophic and it had nothing to do with P-51s. Thunderbolts, flying relay escorts and fuel shortages were bleeding the Luftwaffe dry. The P-51 inherited air superiority, it didn't create it. A captured Luftwaffe colonel later admitted the devastating truth, your Mustangs were excellent but irrelevant. We had no fuel to train, no fuel to fly. We'd take off with 20 minutes of fuel. Your fighters just had to wait for us to land. The escort missions to Berlin weren't heroic victories against a formidable enemy. They were clean-up operations against an already crippled air force. The Mustang showed up to fight an enemy that was already on its knees, gasping for fuel and bleeding experienced pilots. But if the Mustang didn't win the air war, what did? The answer involves an aircraft so effective that it destroyed twice as many enemy planes as the famous Mustang. The real killer of the Luftwaffe wasn't bullets or bombs, it was fuel starvation. By late 1943, German pilots received just 20 hours of flight training. American pilots got 300 hours. This wasn't a tactical choice, it was desperation. Germany simply had no fuel for pilot training. Their aviation gasoline reserves were evaporating faster than their aircraft production could compensate. While American pilots mastered complex combat maneuvers and formation flying, German replacements could barely execute proper landings, let alone engage in dogfights with seasoned Allied veterans. The mathematics of fuel shortage created a death spiral. Experienced German pilots were killed in combat and replaced by undertrained rookies who died even faster. By December 1943, Germany had fewer than 800 trained pilots remaining from their original force of 4,000. They lost 3,200 pilots during the period when Thunderbolts, not Mustangs, dominated European skies. The fuel crisis became so severe that Luftwaffe operations resembled suicide missions more than combat sorties. Pilots took off with barely enough fuel to reach Allied formations, knowing they'd have to land immediately after brief engagements. Many German aircraft crashed simply from fuel exhaustion, never firing a shot in anger. This created an impossible situation. Germany needed experienced pilots to train new ones, but experienced pilots were dying faster than they could pass on knowledge. The fuel shortage didn't just ground aircraft, it destroyed the institutional knowledge that made the Luftwaffe effective. 
German aviation fuel production collapsed from 180,000 tons in April 1944 to just 10,000 tons by September. But what caused this catastrophic decline wasn't fighter escorts. It was a bombing campaign targeting synthetic oil plants, executed by aircraft far less glamorous than the P-51. The P-47 Thunderbolt accomplished what the P-51 never could, systematic destruction of German military infrastructure. While Mustangs escorted bombers at 25,000 feet, Thunderbolts operated at 50 feet, destroying everything that moved on German roads and railways. The kill ratios tell the real story. P-47 Thunderbolts claimed 11,689 air-to-air victories and destroyed 9,000 enemy aircraft on the ground. P-51 Mustangs managed 5,944 air victories and 3,000 ground kills. The obsolete Thunderbolt scored nearly double the victories of the supposedly superior Mustang. But air-to-air -air combat was just part of the Thunderbolt's devastation. These aircraft specialized in infrastructure destruction. 86,000 railway cars destroyed, 9,000 locomotives eliminated, 68,000 trucks reduced to scrap metal. Every destroyed train meant 50 tanks without fuel and 500 soldiers without ammunition. Operation Argument in February 1944 demonstrated Thunderbolt effectiveness. During Big Week, seven days of bombing German aircraft factories, Thunderbolts and P-38 Lightnings flew ground attack missions that destroyed more aircraft on the ground in one week than Mustangs destroyed in the air over six months. This happened while P-51s were still arriving in theater. A P-47 pilot from the 365th Fighter Group explained the reality. Mustang pilots got glory for escort duty. We got shot at by every farmer with a rifle, but we stopped German supplies cold. The Thunderbolt's massive radial engine and robust construction made it ideal for low-level attack missions. Unlike the liquid-cooled Mustang, which could be disabled by small arms fire to its cooling system, the air-cooled Thunderbolt absorbed tremendous damage and continued flying. Thunderbolts dropped 132,000 tons of bombs compared to the Mustang's pathetic 6,000 tons. Yet somehow, history remembers the aircraft that carried fewer bombs, flew fewer missions, and scored fewer victories. But the real shock comes from examining which bomber actually won the war. The B-24 Liberator, not the glamorous B-17 Flying Fortress, delivered the killing blow to Nazi Germany. 18,400 Liberators were built compared to 12,700 B-17s. The ugly, unloved B-24 carried more bombs, flew farther, and cost significantly less to produce. While B-17s flew photogenic missions to Berlin with P-51 escorts, B-24 Liberators attacked the targets that actually mattered, synthetic oil refineries at Plosti, Romania. These raids didn't make good Hollywood footage, but they strangled the German war machine more effectively than any fighter engagement. The oil campaign achieved what fighter sweeps couldn't. German aviation fuel production plummeted from 180,000 tons in April 1944 to just 10,000 tons by September. Without fuel, the Luftwaffe's remaining aircraft became expensive lawn ornaments. Experienced pilots couldn't train replacements. New aircraft sat grounded at factories. B-24s penetrated deeper into enemy territory than B-17, reaching targets that other bombers couldn't touch. Their extended range meant strategic targets across Eastern Europe became vulnerable to systematic attack. The Plosti raids alone reduced Romanian oil production by 80%, cutting off Germany's primary fuel source. The mathematical impact was devastating. Every gallon of aviation fuel destroyed meant German fighters couldn't train pilots, couldn't intercept Allied bombers, and couldn't support ground operations. 
The B-24's payload capacity meant each mission delivered more destructive power to these critical targets. By the time Berlin raids captured headlines, Germany had already lost the fuel war. The Luftwaffe had aircraft but no gasoline to fly them. They had pilots but no fuel for training missions. The air war was effectively over before the first Mustang reached Berlin. But even America's contribution pales compared to the air war's true victors, fighting on a front Hollywood completely ignored. While 800 American fighters operated over Western Europe, 5,000 Soviet fighters attacked from the east. The numbers reveal where the actual air war was decided. Soviet pilots destroyed 13,000 Luftwaffe aircraft compared to America's 8,000 total claims. Of those American victories, P-51s participated in maybe 2,000. The Eastern Front consumed German resources at an unsustainable rate. For every American pilot engaging Luftwaffe fighters over France, six Soviet pilots were destroying German aircraft over Poland and Russia. The mathematical reality is undeniable. The air war was won in Russia while cameras rolled in England. German aircraft allocation tells the story. Two-thirds of Luftwaffe strength was committed to the Eastern Front throughout 1943 and 1944. The Western theater, where P-51s operated, was essentially a secondary concern for German Air Command. They were fighting for survival against overwhelming Soviet numbers. Soviet fighter production dwarfed Western efforts. The USSR built 36,000 fighters during the war, compared to Britain's 24,000 Spitfires and Hurricanes combined. Soviet pilots weren't fighting glamorous escort missions. They were engaged in brutal attrition warfare that bled the Luftwaffe white. The timeline proves Eastern Front priority. Major Luftwaffe losses occurred during Operation Barbarossa, the Battle of Stalingrad, and Kursk, all before P-51s arrived in significant numbers. By the time Mustangs began Berlin escorts, the Luftwaffe had already lost its best pilots and most experienced units to Soviet fighters. German pilot memoirs consistently describe the Eastern Front as the meat grinder that consumed their air force. Western operations were regarded as relatively safe assignments compared to the nightmare of facing Soviet pilots who had survived years of continuous combat. But even these massive air battles were secondary to the real factor that determined victory. Industrial mathematics that made defeat inevitable regardless of individual aircraft performance. American industrial capacity made German defeat inevitable before the first P-51 rolled off the production line. In 1944 alone, America produced 47,000 combat aircraft. Germany built 25,000 aircraft during the entire war. The mathematics of victory were written in factory output, not dogfight statistics. Pilot training programs, not aircraft performance, determined air superiority. American pilots averaged 300 flight hours before combat deployment. German pilots, starved for fuel and training time, received just 20 hours. No amount of engineering excellence could overcome that disparity in pilot quality. The Luftwaffe faced an impossible equation. Replace experienced pilots faster than they died in combat. Early in the war, veteran German pilots mentored newcomers through extended training programs. By 1944, veterans were dead, and replacements arrived at combat units with barely enough skill to avoid crashing during landing. Soviet industrial production added another dimension to German hopelessness. The USSR built 36,000 fighters while maintaining massive ground forces and artillery production. Combined Allied aircraft production exceeded 100,000 units, while Germany struggled to maintain 25,000 total aircraft over six years of war. Logistics sealed German fate more than any single engagement. Transport aircraft delivered fuel to Allied fighters. Supply chains maintained constant aircraft replacement. Training programs produced pilots faster than combat consumed them. Germany possessed none of these advantages by 1944. 
The final truth Hollywood ignores. Unglamorous logistics won the air war. Transport planes, fuel trucks, maintenance crews and factory workers determined victory more than ace pilots or superior aircraft. The P-51 Mustang was photogenic, possessed impressive range, and arrived perfectly timed to claim credit for a victory earned by mathematics, industry, and supply chains, not by any individual fighter aircraft's performance characteristics. Enjoyed this breakdown? Head over to next videos by Vintage Planes for more interesting aviation facts.